Elias, like you said, that Isaiah Bond is day to day with an injury. You've had the chance to go up against him in the past. If he is healthy out there on Saturday, what does he bring to that team? Uh, he's electric. He's he's a great uh, release guy. Um, you know they got they got other good wideouts. They do a great job of upgrading um, their talent pool in the in the portal. You know they got I think three, maybe four pool receivers. I know three. They play a lot of time, and uh, he was one of those guys. Uh, he's twitchy, fast, explosive, elite speed, and elite body quickness. So when you talk about covering people, um, he's explosive. You know he can he can take a handoff, or he can run through the middle of your defense and, and blow the top off. So. And Sarks used to have a really good guys like that um, to uh, set plays up with, to uh, stretch the field vertically and horizontally with. Yeah, two days in, how has practice been so far this week? It's good. Um, I mean, I don't know if it was our best Tuesday. I thought it was good, uh, not great. And we've had some good ones, um, but it was uh, spirited. They, they got after it, and um, we had a good competitive practice. Yesterday was a you know lighter Monday. Like I said, we've had more snaps played um, this year than we ever had before. So we just did a little bit less on Monday and same kind of Tuesdays we've been having. How similar, if at all, would you say Quinn Ewers and Carson Beck are? Yeah, it's, it's interesting you say that. I, I, I mean, I feel that way. Um, you know, I don't get a chance to watch them. I didn't get to watch them last year other than, you know, watch their, their playoff games, obviously. And then, Watched them in the offseason some. And then, you know, you don't have a full, uh, uh, like a full quota of his. He had played in every game. But the games he's played in, he's, you know, very similar in terms of uh, knowledge, um, understanding of their offense, protections. Um, you know, he doesn't seem pressure affects him much. He seems like he has really good composure in there, stands in there. They both have the ability, if something goes wrong, to get you out of a, like a bad play and uh, typically avoid uh, catastrophes. That's what all of the quarterbacks do. That's the similarities you see there. Yeah, it was announced today that the Georgia-Georgia Tech game next year is going to be played in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. What kind of impact do you think that has on that rivalry? Yeah, I don't really know. I had heard that. Um, I mean, the rivalry is, is there. They've done a tremendous job. I think they're they're recruiting at a really high level. Um, they're competing. Um, they're playing really hard. They're really physical. They've got a great coaching staff. Um, so as far as the game being there over, I mean, I don't think it affects the rivalry. You know, like where you play, that game doesn't matter. It's going to be, you know, physical. in meetings. He takes much better notes right now than he has. I mean, his awareness, you know, early on there were, there were times where he might, you know, bust a coverage and if he's playing squat flat to the field and there's nobody behind him because you know, we're in a different coverage, that can be, you know, it's not like a D lineman. A D lineman messes up and none of y'all know. Y'all don't have a clue. A linebacker messes up. Very rarely do you know. But when a corner messes up, everybody knows. And, um, we're, you know, we're trying to take that out of it and, uh, and physical. He, he, he's a physical football player, but he continues to develop. He's been lifting. Um, his toughness shows. He's always been a good tackler. So I'm excited about Ellis. He does a really good job, and um, we're going to keep finding ways to try to get him out there. Hey, Coach, just a, a bit of how much uh, Jordan and Jared are going to do these past few days expecting to travel to Austin. Jordan and who? Yeah, uh, Jared Wilson. Yeah, Jared's been good. Jared's been practicing. Um, seems to be doing more the last two days than he has uh, in the previous weeks. Um, looks good and, and repped out there today. Jordan's done more than he has the last two weeks. He's been out there uh, repping, taking reps with us, and, and getting better. I mean, Jordan's just been a long, hard process, and he's having to get comfortable with 
um, the pain that he has, and it, 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 it jumps up and bites him at times when you never know. It might just hit him on a rep, and that's, that's kept him from being able to take the rep load that he would like to take. Um, but he, he was out there today you know, doing more this week than he did last week when Jared was too. Kirby, you guys are underdogs for the first time since the 21 season opener. I know you don't need any more mo motivation in a week like this, but is that something that's been addressed at all this week? No. I don't even, I don't even know that. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I do not look at lines and, and underdog favorites. I worry about one thing. What do we have to do to play our best? That comes with a lot of game planning. Um, there is a mental approach to the game, but I don't think it's about being the underdog. physical and uh, being prepared to play in a tough place and, and the mental the mental strength it takes to play well on the road you don't need to waste all that energy talking about being the only dog. Kirby on uh, last time you played Texas I know you said last week you didn't remember me like trying to kill me and Jake and some other people but uh, <laughs> the that was the only bowl game that you've lost not counting national championship did do you remember that did that offer any lessons or was it just circumstances or, and how do you reflect on on that game? I don't remember much about it I get those things confused so there's one that we had a lot of guys out we had a lot of guys either academically out and and we kind of took this approach of like if you want to be here get all in if you don't get all out I think that was the Baylor one that, that was, was really yeah. fun and it was like exciting but I think we learned maybe from the Texas one with guys that, that you know may not have been all in. It was a, it was a weird season because I think that was the year that like you're all the way in it to the very end and then you're not. And it was like one of our first games that you weren't playing for at, to play in the playoffs. Um, maybe that's not right, I don't know that, but it was it seemed that way. Um, and you know, you're always trying to find a, a motivating factor, especially at the end of the year. And um, I remember they had a really good team and they were, they were, they were very talented and so were we. And, I know we played a lot of uh, young players in it, but I don't, I don't know if that answers your question or not. Where does Texas fit into what you guys do recruiting? Is there anything unique about trying to get some top players from elsewhere? Unique. Um, there's tons of players in Texas. I mean, I've always said the entire SEC footprint prior to Texas being in the SEC and AM being in the SEC could fit into Texas. So like if you took all the people and, and all the people in Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, Georgia, and you just said, it's like Texas. So there's so many good players there, so many good high schools, um, development, coaches get paid more, they have indoors, they have practice all day, they practice year round, I mean, they just got everything. So when you go over there, I liken it to getting Georgia high school football players. They're very well coached, uh, hard nosed, football's important. So but they're hard to get because of the travel. What we usually end up doing is getting somebody that's connected. You know, it's like, okay, they have some kind of connection, somebody in Atlanta, some relative, uh, maybe a connection to a coach, um, or they really wanted to play in the SEC. And before they had one option, you know, now they've got multiple options. But um, it's, it's the hardest job in Texas is figuring out who to go after. You know, and that, that, I've always heard, Will's always said that about the, the Texas job, it's not, the hard job because of that is hard because you have to figure out who you're going to go recruit because there's so many good players and differentiating player A and player B is really hard. Coach, uh, uh, you know, talking about a couple of years ago, that was the first time that you, you guys didn't have, uh, weren't really playing for anything. Obviously, you guys are playing for something in the, this game, uh, and, and because you've already had a loss. Can you just talk about, I guess you, you run 100 yards as fast as you can run it, no matter what the circumstances are. But the, the narrative here is going to be Georgia cannot afford to lose this game. You know, nah. Texas is – so how does that manifest itself? Does it even enter the football complex? No. That's for you guys to talk about and speculate <clears throat> about, not for us. I mean, the, 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 the quote you had about you weren't playing for me. We were playing for something. Okay, I shouldn't have yeah. said that. I want to say – it was playing for the Sugar Bowl. That matters. Right. That's a that's a big deal. It was not a national championship narrative, and at that point, we weren't in that every year anyway. Um, so, 
you know, I look at it every year and, and I observe our team based on the criteria of do we get the most out of them? Do we maximize the potential of that team? And we know what we see every day on the practice field. We know what we have relative to who we're playing. We know all those things. So I don't get caught up in, well, if this happens or that happens or they're playing, they're, they're, everybody's going to start saying that. They're going to say that for every game, for every team the rest of the way. And really, you're playing the long game. The long game is who, who, who can be the best teams at the end of the year. And you're trying to be one of the best 12 teams. And how that aligns with this game it's, it's, it's not real. We got to worry about how we play in this game. We got to worry about what we got to do to play well in this game, not any narrative that's out there or what people are talking about in the playoffs because that's that's a waste on the road. We got to get better what we got to do. Kirby, six games in, just where do you feel like y'all's run game is at this point in the season? Um, who am I playing? Texas this one. Right. <laughs> so our run game is relative to who we play typically. I mean, that's. Honestly, I, I think you take the opponent out of it and say we set the standard, we should be able to do this. But I also think it's unrealistic in this league to find many teams that are just dominating in the run game. If they are, they probably are doing it some with their quarterback run. Okay, so if you take quarterback run out of it and you say, all right, these are the teams that don't run the quarterback by design, what do you stack up? How are your backs? How are you blocking people? What is your success rate? What is your not average yards per carry, what is your efficiency runs per carry? And, and I've been really comfortable with where that is based on who you play. Yeah, Dylan, back in his home, Dylan Bell back in his home state this week. What have you seen him sort of bring to this offense and bring to this team uh, in his time here at the University of Virginia? He's developed a lot. You know, he came in as a raw, talented uh, running back, you know, and, uh, and, and we knew he could be a wide out from being here at camp. And, uh, brought toughness. He's brought uh, a very different skill set, uh, a catch and run skill set, hard to tackle skill set, um, but very intelligent and uh, he's made us a better team and program. So very thankful we were able to, to get him come. I know defensive line depth was a concern early on with injuries. How would you assess how that group has come along as the season has played out? Still coming. I mean, we're, 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 we're not, we're not complete. We're not you know, we're not injury free. Warren's battling injury. Jordan's battling injury. Um, Michael has been battling injury, and uh, Christian has been battling injury. I mean, he, he's not able to, to to complete the work week every week in and week out. But he's able to go out and play. Nas has been the most reliable and dependable in terms of staying injury free. But um, when you're beat up in one area, it usually means Avery McLeod missed all that time. So there's not really a guy. That hasn't missed time at that position. We've been really fortunate to have the numbers we have, um, even though it's not necessarily the experience we need. It is a lot of uh, big frames and big body types who are getting better. Coach, you were just talking about how it's difficult to evaluate teams running game from week to week, but Texas is a team that had a lot of injuries and in their running back room at the beginning of the year. What stands out to you about who they have out there now? Tough. Man, they run. They run well. They got really fast, uh, physical backs. Um, they got three backs that all play and do a great job. They've also got, you know, probably one of the deepest, most talented offensive lines in the country. They got, you know, multiple guys that will be high draft picks and they're really physical um, in the run game. They they have a, a unique run game in that they run. They're more uh, outside zone than, than than some teams we've played, and they're really good at it. I mean, they did it when Sart was at Alabama. They've done it successfully at, at, at Texas. They do a nice job, you know, averaging a lot of yards carry for SEC plays. So you turned to some backup set tackle and guard. Is, is that harder to do at center if you have two guys that you guys play defense and football? You said turn to maybe talk about play both guys? Yeah, like, you know, bringing a guy for a series here or that. Yeah, it's much harder. I don't know many people that do that, and um, it's hard to do that. Um, maybe somebody does and I'm not aware of it, but typically we don't. That's not a position that we rotate. But both of those guys have flexibility too. They can play other positions. They both can play guard and things. Yeah, Curtis, we saw uh, Chauncey Owens wasn't dressed up the other day. Just what, what is he dealing with uh, injury wise? You see a guy who could be on more. Yeah, he's, he's fine. He's, he's practicing. He had the little injury that he was dealing with uh, last week, but he's, he's been practicing all this week.
the coach, what makes a good wide zone football team or stretch zone football team? And why is it so difficult to stop when a team's good at it? Well, I, I, I have to go a long time into that, and I have to give one of your long dissertations that you give about football, and I can't sit here and give that dissertation right now. So, um, plus, I don't really want to talk um, strategy, you know, with the, the opponent. So, I mean, they're good at it. I can just tell you that, and uh, they do a really nice job at what they do. It's just it's different angles. The you know, back's got a different angle. It's got different pressure points. Um, it's it's you know, we've had problems with certain runs in the last couple of weeks. Well, they run those runs, but they also run uh, outside zone really well. Talk one more question. And you mentioned this about Nas. Uh, just how is he able to stay on the field? It seems like he's played, taking a lot more reps, period, this year. Uh, but that's a position that obviously all kinds of contact. How is he able to do that? I don't know. He's been really durable. I mean, of all the players we've ever had, I can't remember, this is his, this is his fifth year, right? So yeah. it's his fifth. And, and I can't remember the guy missing practice. I mean, he, 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 he has a he has tremendous flexibility, which keeps you from getting injured. He has what we call contact balance, which means he can strike and not get knocked off when another person hits him on a double team. He can anchor. Um, so, you know, he's been very durable, and I you know we would be in trouble without him. And, uh, you know, I thought he had a really, really good year two years ago. He had a pretty good year last year, and then this year he's played better to me than last year, and he, he continues to grow and get better. But he's, he's just been a – a workload and has been really been, in, he's been he's an invaluable leader because he sets an example by the way he practices and his toughness. I mean, he carries more reps than anybody, and, and we've tried to take some of that off of him too in practice because he's played so long. Thank you. Thank you.